Welcome back. We are outside, as you can see, exploring a new look. God, Neil Drysmith joins us and a whole host of plec plectranthesis. What is the plural? How do you say it? Plectranthesis. Plectranthi. Plectranthi. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, welcome. I know we've got some hybrids in here. Now, this is time to plant a whole new range of autumn based plants. As you can see, we've got some of our new um, greens in here as well. Um, tell us a little bit about this plant. Why is it so well suited to autumn and, and what have you got on display? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a great time to plant because it's just going over the season and Plectrant is one of the few shade species that actually flowers going into autumn right into winter. So for all your shade gardens and for semi-shade gardens, absolutely ideal time to this plant. This is a winner. Okay, take us through some of the varietals that are out there. I know okay, this one you so said is the Mona Lavender. Yeah, Mona Lavender. Look, Plectranthus is a huge range of species. There's 60 different species wow. that, that you find in South Africa, uh, naturally. So you've got a whole range. You've got ground covers, like this little guy over here. That's all of them flowering? All of them flowering and all of them flowering autumn, winter. Great. So you've got ground covers like Plectranthus vitsolata, uh, Ciliatus. Uh, this is a shrub form of Zuluensis, which grows to about a meter. Um, this can actually oh. grow in full sun or in semi-shade or full shade. It's so very versatile. Nice. And then your larger shrubs like Eclona and this, which is uh, an Eclona hybrid, which is Mona Lavender, which will grow to probably a meter. This one in particular likes full shade, very rich, well composted soil. The Mona and Lavender, uh, is the lavender just the appearance of it? It's or the it color of the flower, uh, really, more than say, anything else. Nothing to do with it. <laughs> I think it had a little bit of a lavender hybrid in there. No, no, no scent. Okay, what do we need to be aware of when planting the different varietals? Let's start with our bigger, what sort of soil do they need um, when you say semi shade, shade? Um, tell us a bit about that. How do we go about planting? Look, none that? of the Plague species are going to really enjoy sea winds or uh, excessive hot temperatures or dry wind. They want moisture, they, sh they generally shade in forest plants, so they want rich, well composted soil and uh, lots of food. They're heavy bloomers as you can see, so lots of, um, lots of compost, lots of uh, lots of additives. Mm -hmm. ah, see, the, the dogs are excited <laughs> about it. Yeah, we love and, our uh, thigh. Pl hey? Plenty of mulch ah. to retain your moisture in your soil, so that'll okay. keep them healthy and happy through winter. Good in a pot? Some of them are verticillata, this little guy over here, excellent in a pot or a hanging basket, uh, can manage kind of really limited root space. The bigger guys like this, they're going to run out of food after a couple of months in a pot and you're going to need to plant them back into the garden. Um, how long do they take to grow, to flower? How should we be planning our timeline Look, going into autumn to see this nice flowery spread when everything else is dying? <laughs> they stagger quite nicely into winter. So your Mona Lavender, which is a hybrid, obviously it's got a longer flowering period. It's been kind of designed to do that. Um, but depending on which species you plant, you can kind of take your flowering all the way through into winter. So they're great to plant with things like clivers, which flower in winter as well, and just kind of really lighten up a shade garden. Um, now, obviously, something we have to take into account is what we can plant with what, and we've been mm. given some very strict um, guidelines by Ben. What can we plant these guys with? What will they grow um, as a companion plant, and what must we steer clear of? Look. They're quite fast growing and it's very easy to take cuttings from them. So it's important to remember how much space they're going to take up. Okay. So plant them with things that are, you know, your, your companion forest plantings, things like arum lilies, clivias, um, other shade ground covers. So mix it up with your general forest stuff. Don't try and mix it with things that want full sun or, or um, you know, sea wind or, or kind of more harsh conditions. Stick to the kind of forest lushy conditions. Okay, now you've given me a, a lead into my next question. A tip for planting in winter. What is the best way to approach it so that we have a lovely, rich, full garden? How do we protect our soil and what sort of plants should we be putting into our, our winter garden now that we, we move into a new season? Well, your, your winter gardens in Cape Town are, are quite defined. There's only a, probably 15 or 20 kind of versatile shade That's species what can to survive. You. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> you generally find that your shade conditions are quite dark and quite gloomy and the, the soil generally is, is more moist and there's only a kind of limited kind of range of things. You know, the Cape Coastline is more exposed and more kind of uh, yeah, it's sun orientated yeah. basically. So the, your variety of kind of of sun species or full sun species is much greater than our shade species. You know, if you walk around Newlands Forest, that'll give you an idea of what you're going to find in your average kind of Cape Town shade garden. So it's arum lilies, most of your species, 
uh, some of the dietes and the irises and your clivias. I love that. Well, actually, if you want a bit of inspiration, go out there and see what nature is doing at this time exactly, of the year. Exactly. That gives you a great cue to follow in your own garden. Neil, uh, I don't think you're going to leave with these. Eh? We're going to see if we go and we can <laughs> uh, plant flat. these around here. But I love the look of our garden. It really is impressive. Moving into a new season, I hope you are inspired to go out there and get your hands dirty and a little bit cold as we move into the new season. We're going to take a quick break, continue with a bit more in the kitchen and a fantastic Monday morning, beating back those Monday morning blues on Espresso.